Hi, Alenea. Uh, what a pleasure to have you here. We find ourselves in the middle of the COVID crisis. What about you just like tell us a little bit who you are and what you usually do when you're not stuck at home? Uh, yeah, basically I came to LA almost 20 years ago uh, to study art at UCLA and then I became an artist and I've been here ever since. My background was always in technology. I love computers, I love uh, even programming. Then I set up a studio that it's, um, I have all different things that I can produce in the studio from more traditional wood making to even laser cutting. So because of the COVID crisis, I had to close it for a couple of months. We know how to make things. I mean, that's what an art education gives you, that you, you just know you're not afraid to make basically anything. So we're like, okay, let's, let's produce something that can be helpful. And it's been a pleasure to work with you on this uh, face shield project to help the community. Yeah, I mean, it definitely came from uh, trying to engage. I mean, running a robotics lab, you're like engaged in automation and technology. And so when all these face shields came out where people started 3D printing, so it was like, can we use that? Uh, we started working on this because we shared concern uh, for people around us. There was this uh, incredible demand for PPE, uh, personal protective equipment, and you know it's not really rocket science to produce this PPE. Um, we kind of know how to do it, so we researched tons of projects, right? Like the existing face shields. A lot of the criticism that I think we had on those projects were that they were very slow to make because most people were laser cutting them or three D printing, which. We thought, you know, those technologies were better used mainly for prototyping, but not for the mass production. We kind of made a whole new version. I mean, of course, if we were going through like the whole trouble of making our own design, then it had to have all these different qualities, right? And one of them was that it had to travel flat so we could pack many of them in a small box and also for storage. We wanted to come up with a design that like we could send out and people could like self-assemble it. We wanted to be a little conscious in terms of global warming and have a plastic that could be recycled. Then we had to come up with a name. So you came up with Shield 19, which it like resembled, of course, what it was, but also the 19 for COVID-19, the fact that this virus started in 2019. Even though we actually only wanted to make a couple hundred in the beginning, we always approached it thinking of like, how are we going to make 10,000 of these and then basically have a pipeline ready to be able to like really process many. And I think that was unconsciously a smart thing to do in the beginning. I remember thinking a lot, you know, having all the boxes of shields here and thinking a lot, okay, like, who are going to want them very quickly. Either people started reaching out to us. The LA Times published a list of all the nursing homes that were getting COVID cases and even, you know, people dying of COVID. So now we're in the process of calling every nursing home in LA to see how many shields, you know, we can provide. And slowly we're sending all the shields to every nursing home that has asked. And the same with homeless shelters. In the end, we continuously run out of them, which is very rewarding in that sense. You know, I had an empty studio at the time with like a laser cutter. You had the 3D printer. So, you know, in a way we were like such a good team even from the start because you could try one part of the shield. I could try the other part of the, the shield. And at some point you had one part and I had the other and then we had to meet and just see if, you know, they work together. Even though we had a lot of good tools like 3d simulation like you know we could like try so many things on the computer at some point i mean you have to feel the elastic and you have to feel whether it fits well in your head and you know at some point just the computer wasn't enough some like positive takeaways from like even though from this paradigm shift i think something we noticed was like the way how differently we work we like came together we like a couple days we tried precedents then like a couple of days figured this out after like two and a half weeks or something this whole thing was stamping and then we were like oh it needs a website oh it needs like this should we have an instagram should we have like this thing and there i think all these digital tools are unbelievably helpful because that's kind of like the silicon valley mindset of like fail forward and just like make something and then you figure as you go and that was kind of interesting that this particular situation forced us into this and i definitely like uh, cherish that experience.
I mean, it's true. We went from having nothing to having like 500 shields in the first two weeks and then like 10,000 in like a month later. And I think that's quite remarkable for a whole production that's made in, in the US and, you know, just with what we had at hand. We definitely are at the right time to make something like that happen. I think if you do something which like engages with people, um, there is always an opportunity to kind of like create something out of the nothing. On one hand, like uh, connects you to so many people, but at the same time also like uh, benefits so many people. I think that was very rewarding. You know, whenever we received the photographs of healthcare workers wearing our shields, it is rewarding. Well, thank you, Analia. I can only give back how, what a pleasure it has been. Again, thank you and um, uh, good luck.